This one was really hard to do. I was so scared. I was so ashamed. My spirit was just, call, what if that person does not leave to see tomorrow? Just call that person. And hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Pearl and today I want to talk about something really personal. My journey of overcoming childhood abuse. It's a story that's hard to tell, but it's also one of healing, forgiveness and finding peace. For now, I am doing a series on that, how I overcame. If you have gone through it, if you are going through it, I hear you. I am here to support you and I understand what you're going through. I have gone through mental, physical, emotional and also sexual abuse. Today, I want to share with you how I have overcome and I'm still overcoming. I carried the weight of that trauma with me. It affected every aspect of my life. I was abused physically, mentally, emotionally, and sexually by some of the people who were supposed to love and protect me. I had a hard childhood and until recently, a hard adulthood. I have done counseling and I also did 10 weeks of therapy. It consisted of life coaching and grief therapy. It was intense, very powerful and very successful. The one thing I did not do was to forgive the people who had done these things to me. And therefore I could not, and I did not get the full benefit and peace that I needed to enjoy life and to move on. There was a time when we were having lunch at church and some of the church members suggested that I call my abusers. But guys, the shame and the fear that I had carried with me for so many years held me back. It held me back from making the call, but it wasn't until I hit a real low point in my life that I realized I had to face my past head on. I could not ignore the pain anymore. It was messing up my relationships, my health, and even my faith. So the first step for me was acknowledging what had happened to me and accepting that it wasn't my fault. This is key, you guys. Yes, what was done to me was really bad, but I had to accept it because I had no choice. It has already happened. I had to accept the fact that it happened to me. I had to also accept that it wasn't my fault because one of the things that I was constantly thinking of, why did the person do that to me? Did I do something? Did I do anything to encourage that? Was I a bad child? Was I dressing in a way that was not right you know and you feel all that guilt and all of that shame and i i had to reach the point where i had to accept the fact that i did nothing wrong i was not at fault and here is a bible verse that can really help psalms 147 verse 3 and it says this he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. This verse is a huge comfort to me. It reminds me that I wasn't alone in my pain and that God was there with me, ready to heal all these old wounds and that he has always been there to help me. This verse gives me hope and encouragement. It's a reminder that even though I was broken, God could and has put me back together. It has given me the courage to continue on my healing journey. Forgiveness turned out to be the most powerful thing I could do for myself. But I'm not going to lie. It wasn't easy. I remember the night that I had to do that. And it was, this one was really hard to do. And my mind kept on telling me, Call that person, call the person and say you forgive. Set that person free to set yourself free. And I remember sitting there and I couldn't, and my mind was just, my spirit was just, call, what if that person 
does not leave to see tomorrow. Just call that person. And I remember I decided, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Because in my mind, it was just constant. Call, call, call. And I called my husband and I asked him to stay with me. He was going to the bathroom. And I said, come sit next to me on the couch. And he came, he sat there and I said to him, I'm going to call the person, but I want you to be there for me. My husband is one of the people that is my source of strength. And he sat next to me and he said, okay. I picked up the phone and I called that person. I was so scared. I was so ashamed to do that because this is one of the worst thing to, to have happen to you. And here you are. And you have to call that person who did this thing to you, who messed you up so badly. And you have to call that person and say, I forgive you. In my mind, I said, Lord, I'm going to call that person. But if that person does not answer, that's it. I'm not calling again. So when I picked up the phone to call, the, 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 the phone started to call. It was not ringing, but ringing. I'm calling, calling. And then eventually it started to ring. When I saw ringing on the phone, my heart started to pound. It was going like this. And, and I was like, if he doesn't answer, I am not calling again. And eventually he answered. And when he answered, God gave me that strength, that strength to speak. All my fear, all my shame was gone. And I, and I spoke to that person with so much strength and authority. God is amazing, you guys. I spoke to that person with so much strength and authority and he wanted to deny it, but I knew what happened. God knew, knows what happened. If you want to deny it, that's up to you. I am setting you free and I am setting myself free as well. Does that mean I condone what he did? No, but I wanted that freedom for myself. And I, 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 I told him, I forgive you. I am setting you free. Now it was between him and God. It was between him, his conscience and God. And I did that. It wasn't easy. It took time and a lot of prayer and a deep desire for peace. I wanted that. Forgiving my abusers wasn't about letting them off the hook. It wasn't. It was about freeing myself from the hold that trauma had on me. Because believe me, when you decide I'm not going to forgive, that person is living their life and you are here, you are angry, you have frustration, you have depression, you have stress, you have all of these things and that person is living their life. Maybe they, they don't even care about it. They are hoping that you will not talk, but they are still living their lives and here you are stuck. You know, I wanted inner peace. I wanted to live and not just exist. And I had to do that for myself. Forgiving does not mean that I condone what they did to me, but rather choosing. I, and, and, and this is the key, choosing to move on with my life, choosing to find inner peace, choosing to be free from the bondage that comes with it. The fear, the shame, the anger, the frustration and pain. I have chosen to be free from the burden I carried with me all these years. Instead of just existing, I have chosen to live. I am no longer existing, but living. And that is key. When you're going through that, you were just existing. You were just going through the rounds. But now you have let go of this anger and that pain. That's when you are beginning to live. Another verse I lean on is Ephesians 4, 32. Be kind and compassionate one to another, forgiving each other just as Christ forgave you. I have forgiven those people who hurt me. And instead of you, I insert me just as Christ forgave me. This helps me to understand that forgiveness is more about my own peace of mind than anything else. It's about following the example that God set before me. This verse really hit home for me. It helps me to see forgiveness not as something I owe anyone, but as something I owe myself. By choosing to forgive, I have chosen to live in the freedom and grace of God. 
the freedom and grace that God offers. As I went through this process, y'all, I also learned how important it is to love myself and to surround myself with positive, supportive people. That is key. You need that. My faith played a huge part in helping me realize that I deserved love, happiness, and a life free from my past. 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 through 7 has become a really meaningful passage for me. Love is patient. Love is kind. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. This helps me to be patient and kind with myself and to trust in the process of healing, even, even when it feels slow. Sometimes you will feel like the process is very slow. But trust the process. These words remind me that I needed to treat myself with the same love and kindness that the Bible talks about. Healing is a journey. It is okay to take it one step at a time. Be patient with yourself. Just be patient. See where you have come from, where you were and where you are today. Just look back and you will see how far you've come. When I look back to where I was and where I am today, I give God praise. When I used to sit down on the couch just crying, and my husband used to ask me, why are you crying? I couldn't even explain to him why I was crying. All I would say to him, I don't know why I'm crying. I just felt so overwhelmed. For me to release is just cry. Crying for me is therapy. And I used to cry. I used to push myself through. I was existing. But now I'm leaving. And I'm asking you, is it worth it to give them that kind of power over you? For me, it wasn't. It took me time to get there. It took me positive people to help me see, Pearl, you're existing, you gotta leave. Don't give that person power over you like that. Don't give these people these kind of powers over you. You have the power to break it right now, right here. And that I did by the grace of God. And guys, I'm leaving things I never used to do. I'm able to do now. I have recorded some videos that I will share with you guys of things that I was not able to do before. And now I'm able to do it. I'm leaving and not existing. I know that some of you watching might, might have gone through similar experiences. And I want you to know that there is hope. Healing is a process and healing is possible and you don't have to do it alone if my story speaks to you please leave a comment below or share your story let's build a community where we can support and uplift each other thank you so much for watching and being a part of this journey with me don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next video in this series i'll see you in the next one